good guys we're back at it again with another video as you can see by the title we got rob dillingham today uh number 14 player in the country according to uh, espn class of 2023 6162 point guard combo guard whichever one you want to say with rob i remember seeing his name in my comments maybe back when we first started almost like almost close to the beginning but like you know with me being an old head even though i just got done playing last year I'm kind of an old head to high school basketball. So when I saw his name the first time, it was more of, oh, like, I don't even know. Maybe they're just commenting like a random name. Like, I don't, I honestly had no idea. But now, recently, at least one or two people, everything I post, don't matter where it is, TikTok, Instagram, on YouTube, it's at least one or two Rob Dillingham uh, comments. Now, like I said just now, I hadn't seen him. I This kid, I hadn't seen a highlight. I hadn't even seen him dribble the ball ever. So saying that, I'm going to say this right before we get into it. This kid got, I see a little uh, Kyrie in his game. Now, I'm not saying he as good as Kyrie. I'm not saying he anywhere close. I'm saying I'm seeing some similarities in the way they move on the court. But uh, I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. Let's go. Even though Rob didn't create a lot of space on this possession, what do I say certain players are able to do? They're able to make bad shots look like good shots, and that's what this shot is. Hand in his face. Still doesn't matter. He's still able to knock it down. This is a good example of his ball handling ability. Now, I do want you guys to notice his two teammates on the other side of the court. The right play would probably be to come to a jump stop and make that swing pass instead of taking this fadeaway over the 6'9 defender. Good initial three by Rob. He just happened to miss the shot. Now, you guys know I always have to include low effort plays. So right here, make sure you guys are never jogging back or don't get back like this because it always leads to layups. Rob is electric in transition. Now, he does have tendencies to have a little tunnel vision. As you can see, he missed his teammate on the wing, but he is good enough to draw the foul on this play. This is a knockdown three for Rob, but remember what I always tell you guys, never leave ball side corner. Great footwork on this play, simple, fundamental, one-two pull-up. His ability to finish in traffic as well as through contact is pretty high level as he has a full array of acrobatic finishes in his bag. Rob is also a tough shot maker. As you can see here, he doesn't even hold his follow-through. This entire possession is an example of patience within the half court. He doesn't get what he wants initially and pulls it back out. Then he calls for the ball screen again. Ends up rejecting it right into a pull-up. Tough shot. We have to slow-mo this whole clip because it's just different. First, he spins through three defenders into a tough Euro splitting two into a crazy layup. That's just next level talent. Tough shot makers like Rob have the ability to pull up in front of anyone from anywhere and it'll still go in. Now, you don't see this often within the AAU circuit, a player playing so well with the ball in his hands that the other team actually has to triple team him to get the ball out of his hands. That's just different. Hey, so, Rob, I hope not after seeing that breakdown, y'all not looking at me crazy when I say he kind of looked like Kyrie. And here's why. Um, for Kyrie and Rob, it's like a combination of shot-making ability and ball handling and wiggling, and things like that. Notice how I'm not saying shooters instead i'm saying shot making right so when i say a shooter i'm talking about someone like steph right so steph has all the handles but he would be considered more of a shooter because he's running he's running around he's running off pin downs he's coming off flares and he's shooting off the catch things like that so steph is shooting not only off the dribble but he's shooting all over the court on the move like in any situation which is why he would be considered a shooter right so for Kyrie and rob it's kind of like they're more shot makers. A lot of their shots, they're not going to be running off, coming off pin downs. They're going to have the ball in their hand, and they're going to they're going to try and blow you to sleep, and then they pulling on you, or they coming off with a sidestep, things like that. So they're shot makers. But for Rob specifically, offensively, like he can finish, he can finish in traffic. There was one, there was one play I didn't put it in there because it didn't count. They called it like they called a foul early, but he had a what left hand floater, tough left floater. Uh, like I said, it didn't count, but that's tough. So we can finish with both hands, acrobatic finishing. He got the, uh, 
He got the uh one one dribble pull up. He got the he got the three pull up off the dribble. It looked like if his feet are set, he can also hit the shot. Um, so offensively, he's looking like a complete three level score. Defensively, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't see you know like a lot of players will they're uh, with AAU now will they play a lot of zone, so you kind of get hidden in defensive and defensive uh, schemes and things like that. And coaches do that on purpose because they know who their bad defenders are. So, you know, if you want to hide somebody, you put everybody in the zone so you can't pinpoint one player. But for him, defensively, there are times when there are lapses in terms of like it's like I showed you guys. He didn't run back on defense or I kind of watched a little bit of the other game. He was kind of he'd just be kind of like walking on the defensive end, wouldn't close out, things like that. But again, players that young, they're not really they're more focused on offensive when they're younger. I mean, there are anomalies like Jay Gort which is why he's one of my favorite players, dude, that's coming off the rip, coming at your best player. But again, that's kind of learned as kids get older. Um, for these rankings, they have him at number 14. So I want to let you guys know what ESPN does, why they only rank uh, 60 players when they're young is because there's going to be a lot of movement between now and 2023, which is when these dudes graduate. Because just telling you my experience, when I was in high school, there was a lot of players who... When we were freshmen and sophomores, top 60, these dudes had all the mixtapes, all the highlights. But by the time we get to senior year, they're not even in the top 100. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be a lot, a lot of movement. Like I said in one of my older videos about how the rankings work, a lot of the times when you're younger. And like I'm looking at these rankings right now, most of these players, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think seven, seven or eight of the top 10 in 2023 are six, seven or taller. So like I said, when you're younger, the bigs are going to be at the top of the class. And then as everyone starts to grow and people start to come and it starts to get a little even, you'll start to have more variety within the top 10. But I definitely think uh, Rob's going to be one of those players that's going to shoot up those rankings because he's definitely extremely skilled. Uh, like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Again, keep sending your film down to the email in the description with the game picture and uh, jersey number. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll be back at it on Friday with a new video.